Hey everybody, what's up? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching the sit down. The L Word Generation Q is coming back to show time for season two. Kate Menig and Leisha Haley are here with us. What's going on? How are you two doing? Hi, we're doing Hi. great. How are you? Good to be here. I'm excellent. I'm very excited the show is coming back. And listen, this show has been critical to a lot of folks. For you two, it's been a couple different chapters of this show. So Kate, why don't we start off with you? What can people anticipate in season two of the series coming uh, August 8th? Uh, well, let's see. Um, that's a bit. That's a big general question. I I, I think. Um, well, I, I, specifically for character, uh, to maintain some patience because uh, where she begins and where she ends are in very different places, and it takes a it's a very very slow burn to get there. Um, and uh, I think she's also approaching things a bit slower and a more and more. Uh, deliberately than she normally does trying to fix some past mistakes and not try to repeat them which was refreshing to do yeah i think i mean as a general sweep i think you're going to see a lot of uh, relationships develop that you weren't expecting um you're going to see probably some relationships end that you weren't expecting so it, it always has yeah. that rich like juicy soapy quality that we all love about this show um and as uh, personally for my character, like Alice writes a book this season and it sort of forces her to uncover some things that maybe she's buried for a long time that she didn't really want to deal with um, and probably didn't even know she wasn't dealing with. So by writing this book, she starts to do that. It's incredible to see the journeys the characters go on the show, the journeys that both of you have gone on your acting careers. I mean, Kate, when you think about this show, just the iteration that it is now, I mean, what is most impactful in terms of just the show itself and what it's done so far? Well, I mean, it's, you know, the, the original show was, you know, the first of its kind and it was, and it, you know, paved the way. And this show, we're just trying to keep up with everything and trying to stay relevant. And, um, and, it, and, you know, and to, to, and it's wild to think that in 2000, it's wild to think that in 2021, that this began in 2002. And I never would have guessed I would have had this long trajectory with this one and within the series itself. Yeah, I think I think uh, the job of the show has changed so much. I mean, we, we broke down so many barriers at the beginning and we were the first of its kind as far as like representing our community, like uh, like gay characters were so rare in television back then, um, let alone having a show that was completely focused on a group of you know, queer women in Los Angeles, it was just unheard of. So now it's about uh, all the changes that have happened in our community and, and culturally, and uh, in those 10 years we were off the air and coming back and making sure re we're representing the everyone correctly. And, um, but but also what's the, the subtleties of just showing these characters living their daily lives in that we find it to be like a political statement it doesn't you don't always have to step on you know the soapbox and and say it out loud you can just like show people even in 2021 it's still a political statement to just show people in this community living their lives i mean that's the crazy thing about but, this and right. you both mentioned it before i mean there wasn't a show like this right so can you just take me back to the early 2000s when both of you hear about the show and then you actually do the show? I mean, what's the craziest part when you think about just first getting on the air and making the impact? I thought it was gonna be this niche little project that no one was ever gonna see. And, you know, I had no idea what I was getting into. So to me, it was just a like, oh, it's another little gay, cause I'd been in this like indie gay movie and everything was just very like underground at that point. So I thought this was just gonna be another one of those. So I think, you were as shocked as I was that like when it became this mainstream hit that people were like grabbing onto, we were yeah. all just like, what? Like what's happening? And then, you know, it, it, it changed, it changed so many things, or it was at least a part of the change. I, I'm not going to say it's, you know, responsible for everything, but it was, we were a big part of just like, you know, getting in everyone's living room every Sunday and going like, no, we're just like you, like the overarching theme of the show is love and we all have that in common and we're just doing it with other women. And personally, uh, the experience of actually making the original show was magical. And uh, we, cause we all, we were in Vancouver together and we all just synced up perfectly, the entire cast. So on a selfish personal level, 
um, we were so happy the show was doing well because that meant we got to go back and shoot another season and have those experiences together again. So, you know, we, I think, you know, on a, on a, on a, you know, on a work level, we were, you know, feeding off of each other so much, like the way audience were feeding off the show when it came out so much, it was a real, it was, a, it, it really it crossed all like all fantasy reality. Well, going off of that point too, you mentioned the 10 year gap between the shows, right? So there's this huge void in your life and then you get to go back into it. So what was the coolest part of being able to do it again? And, you know, a few years down the road. The fact that we had an opportunity to do it again, because we'd been really trying to figure out how to do this for a while and reboots didn't exist. And, and we thought, well, what, what does a movie look like? That's never going to happen. And thank God reboots became a thing and we got, we got put on that train. So when Showtime came around and said, yeah, we want to do this, that was just, you know, the, the thing you've been, we've been dying to hear for Yeah, for years. well, we thought also we were watching the world change around us. Like we got marriage rights. And I mean, that's one of many things that happened, but it felt like like our duty to come back and, and show these characters in today's world. Like, and not only these characters that people knew already, but like, let's show the next generation. Like everything has changed so much. Like it's important to come back and, and keep telling these stories. The other incredible thing too is just that so many people in the LGBTQ plus community feel seen and feel heard with this type of show. And, you know, this is done in the advent of social media, right? Whereas when you first came on the air, social media didn't exist. So can you just share some stories about folks reaching out to you or just, you know, just some of the messages that you've gotten over the years about the type of impact the show has made? Yeah, social media was actually a big part of us realizing people still had a need for, the, for this kind of content because we all assumed when we went off the air in 2009, like, oh, some obviously something's going to like come in its place and like, you know, you pass the torch and, and nothing happened, nothing like that happened. And we were just like, wait, like we have to like fill this void. We have to come back. And social media was a big part of us like, we would start reading like, oh, I wish the Elwood would come back or I miss these characters or, oh, I wish I could see what they're doing today. And, and we were like, you know, we were showing Showtime this data also like this is, let's do this. And then and we all did it together. So it's, it's a huge part of it. Kate, how about for you? Any, anything in terms of the impact of social media or just even the connectivity that this show now provides with so many different people? Yeah, I mean, you know, if, I, um, yeah, I mean, you, if there, there's like minute to minute, um, you know, opinions and feedback on the series. And, and I said this earlier, uh, that the thing that, that it, that's a real trip is when, you know, a 19 year old will come up to me or us and say what, like how the show affected their lives. And how they just start, how they they just finished it, or they just started watching it, and and you're looking at, and you're and you're doing the math in your head, and you're thinking, you were maybe two years old when the show <laughs> first came out, or when we were shooting the pilot. Now you're yeah. 19. I feel old, but um, <laughs> but how great, that but it how has great that <laughs> it has that effect because you know it, it's it's a lot of like you said, a lot has changed since then. I mean, even you know visually, the show looks so different than the way shows look now, and. The fact that that 19 year old is like, no, I'm finding a lot of value in this. And thank you for that. It's yeah. very profound. Thematically, and, and, it still holds up. I yeah. mean, stylistically, our hairdos and our outfits, sure, like dated, you know, big time. But like thematically, it's still something a, a queer kid can, can watch and feel like they're seeing themselves. And that to me, or to all of us is so important because we grew up in a time where we had no, no representation on television or in the movies. So you would, you would sort of like project these uh, ideas onto like straight characters or, or when, you know, like my Cagney and Lacey was a big one for me because it was like this really intimate female friendship. And it was like this, something I could like, it just meant something to me, even though they weren't gay. But like, so to see yourself, to see actual gay characters and queer characters and trans characters and non-binary characters, it's like, it means the world. And, and you know that as a queer kid. No question about it. I know there's a bunch of guest stars on season two. Some are known, some are some surprises down the road. Can we get a story or two about some people that you two worked with that you're really pumped to? Anybody stand out in your minds? Well, I had the pleasure of working with Donald Faison. He's incredible. Um, he's such a pro. We laugh so much on set. So I work a lot with him. He's my book editor or Alice's book editor. And um, we got to work with Rosie O'Donnell, who we all flipped over 
that's such an incredibly charismatic, wonderful, smart, funny human being that now we're all like mm-hmm. fighting to get storylines with yeah. her next season because she's so awesome. Um, I, yeah, we were great. I and I had the uh, the and I had the honor of um, working with Jamie Clayton, and we had the greatest time together and um, I'm very, very proud of the work that we did. And I'm really excited to get it out there and for people to see it. So I don't have to speak in code anymore about it. It would be nice to not speak in code anymore and for everybody to watch the show. So exactly. Kate, exactly. Nisha, really appreciate the time. Great to meet you. And thanks for all the great work over the years. Thank Goodbye you so much. Thanks DJ, thank you. you take care now.